Hey everyone, welcome back to Friends to the Bookends. I am a one half of this lovely book channel. My name's Danielle and I'm the resident romantic. So I'm trying to stick with my goal of making a vlog once a week. So hey, welcome. Um, in this vlog, I'm kind of just going to cover some books that I'm reading. Also, my mom and I have started fostering five tiny itty bitty kittens because their mother unfortunately was killed by a car. So we are fostering them, and if you love cats as much as I do, because I love, love, love cats, especially kittens, I am going to include some clips at the end of this vlog so you can see the cute little babies. They're really not doing much aside from eating or sleeping, but they are just so freaking adorable. So you can catch that at the end. Um, first things first. The Happy Camper by Melody Carlson. This was on my September TBR to finish because I've been trying to read it for like a month and a half. Um, if you didn't catch the other vlog that I posted last week, I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety lately and this book was actually a good book for it because I really lost my appetite for reading and this was a very slow paced, simple, really just giving life vibe. And so there wasn't too much that I had to kind of put into it to read. I was able to put it down, pick it up a week later, and not really have to remember where I was at. It was very slow paced. And for the most part, I think this was a good book for me to read at this point in my life because I was not able to put a lot into reading. That being said, I think my appetite for reading is coming back because the last like 50 pages, I was like, all right, come on, let's pick up the pace. Like, what are we doing here? What's going on? What am I going to get more details? Like, I was getting bored with the book. So overall, I'm going to give this book a 3.5. Um, it had some very cute, soft moments in it, but I just feel like it was not advertised correctly because on the back, it talks about how Dylan is basically starting her life over as she moves back to Colorado. No. Basically, Dylan is starting her life over as she moves back to Oregon after breaking up with her boyfriend, quitting her job, and it mentions how there's this cute handyman store owner that she may be having feelings for, but then her ex pops back up, and it sounds more so like it's going to be a love triangle kind of situation, and Dylan has to figure out where she wants to go with it, but in essence, the book is more so about finding her place in life and dealing with her struggles with her mom and her mom finding her place in life, which isn't bad, but I was just set up wrong with it. For those who have grown to know me over these past months that we've been doing videos, I'm a huge hopeless romantic. So if you're pitching this book to me as being a love triangle or involving some love moments going on, there better be some cuteness, some flirting, some hotness, maybe a little bit of sexiness, no. None of that. There's no flirting. The setup with the ex-boyfriend, I think, is just very strange. Um, there are some dramatic moments that are, like, done in two seconds. Which, to me, if you're going to cause drama, especially at the climax part of the book, it better last a little bit longer so I can really be on the edge of my seat like, oh my gosh, what is going to happen? I can sense something's wrong here, what's going on? But if the drama is starting and finishing within one page, mm, not really the greatest, my opinion. I also think the romance between her and the handyman store owner was extremely slow. By the end of the book, they're still just holding hands. I don't even think they kiss anywhere in this book. And it's just like, that was so slow to build up to nothing. So while it was a good book for me to read at this point in my life, I think it is also a sign that I am ready to graduate to the next level of reading. Hopefully get back to the normal vibe I'm usually at. So it was a fine enough read. It was cute. It was simple. It just, it was a little too simple for me at the end. So a 3.5 for it. I still enjoyed it. I just will not be reading it again. I do like the cover though. It's very, very summery, very relaxed vibes. So I like that. So that is done. I am hopefully starting Anxious People by Frederick Brockman today. And 
I'm hoping to have an update with you guys later today because again this book has been very hyped up both in my mind and in booktube <laughs> so I am very curious to see how it matches up to my expectations and if it's gonna suck me right in or if it's gonna be a little slow like the happy camper was so fingers crossed it goes well I'll catch you guys later all right guys I'm gonna check in real quick um I just got out of the shower and I started reading The Anxious People by Frederick Bachman and I am only 25 pages in and I am like boom I am pulled into this story like this is very fascinating I don't think there's going to be any romance in it, of course, which, hello, if there's a book that does not have a love story in it, but I am still intrigued, that gives it really high praise. Um, so already there's, like, multiple chapters that have different points of view. There's, like, a narrator point of view. There is um, a narrator from 10 years ago point of view. I wouldn't say really point of view, but kind of two different timelines that the narrator is narrating. And then also you have this point of view between the investigation that the police is running and it's all very intricate and you have some short chapters, like one page chapters, and then you have some really long chapters. And already I'm like pulled in to all of these different timelines or point of views and I'm like, give me more, like, please, I want to read this all tonight. I probably won't be able to read it all tonight, but I just want to jump in real quick because already I'm sucked in and we are 25 pages in. And there's like 300, 400 pages in this. So I hope it keeps going as great as it's been going so far. But I will check in with you guys when I'm a little bit further in the book so I can have more of a constitutional background to talk about. <laughs> hey everyone! So I realized I haven't recorded the last part of my vlog yet to give you an update on where I am with the anxious people. But I also realized it is time to feed the kittens again. So why not do them both at the same time? If you hear some squeaking or crying in the background, it's because there are five kittens surrounding me right now. So, sorry for the slightly awkward angle, but this way you'll be able to see the cat when I'm feeding them. Yeah, let's dive right in. Alright, so this one here is Christian. He's one of the bigger ones. So you can't really see her right now because of the angle of this. But this right here is Anna. Um, you did not get to see much of Christian because he was being a very fussy eater and is apparently camera shy. Um, so I named, my mom and I named these kittens together and when we first got them they had like only a few remarkable characteristics and in order to keep everyone, you know, straight because we had to track their weight and how much they're eating, we decided to come up with the names for them and Anna and Christian... Well, see, Christian was this really extremely dark, like, charcoal gray, and Anna was a much softer gray. And so that made me think of Shades of Gray, Fifty Shades of Gray, Anna and Christian. So that's what they're named after. <laughs> um, we actually do not know the genders of most of these cats, because while we have a lot of knowledge with taking care of kittens, we do not have a well-versed knowledge of how to check gender. I'm sure we could Google it, but I kind of want it to be a surprise. They have their uh, vet checkup in a couple weeks, and the vet will be able to tell us the genders. So, I'm assuming this is a girl, this is Anna, and I'm assuming the other one is a guy, which is Christian. So that is that. Uh, these cats are, we're estimating them to be about two and a half weeks at the time that this vlog is posted. So, they are still very young and still need to be bottle fed. Kittens aside, I am about 100 pages into The Anxious People. So far, it's not completely stealing my breath away like it was in the beginning, but I still think it is intriguing enough to keep going. Frederick Bachman is very unique with his way of writing. Like, you know when you talk to someone and someone is telling you a story and then they get sidetracked by a different story, so they're like, oh yeah, let me tell you about these kittens, and then, and then oh, but these dogs, let me tell you about these dogs, and then they eventually get back to the kittens. So that's kind of what he wrote this book like so the narrator is narrating and then it gets sidetracked and then it comes back to the original story which sometimes is funny because it's actually kind of comical the side story it goes on and sometimes it's almost like okay hurry up I want to get to the end of the sentence so I have mixed feelings on that writing style it also seems to be going very slow in the beginning 
And again, it's still like putting a puzzle together. So you have a couple pieces here, a couple pieces there, a couple pieces there, and you're like kind of putting it together, but also kind of not. And so far, the story seems very straightforward in regards to the characters' buildups. But you almost wonder what exactly is going to happen, like where the shoe drop is going to come in, because you know that there's no way in heck that this is the story because it's almost a little too straightforward like it's not a detective story there's got to be more going on here so I'm curious to see what more we discover with the book all right so now that she's done eating you can kind of see Anna a bit more she's so small she's also a little dazed right now because she is drunk on milk so ignore that oh she drinks some milk now, some fun facts about kittens. When they are this young, they do not have a digestive system, so you have to rub their tummies in order for them to go to the bathroom, essentially. And also, at this young, they cannot thermoregulate, which means that they cannot control their body temperature. So you always have to make sure that they are kept warm, typically with a heating pad or a heating blanket, or just make sure that wherever you have them is in a very warm space. Otherwise, they're always at risk of hypothermia, and you do not want that for little kittens. All right, so this next one is Squirt. She is the runt of the litter. She's the only one who is a confirmed female. We had to take her to the vet this week because she had a very bad eye infection. And especially since they're so young, and especially since she is the runt of the litter, we were very concerned about it. So we got some antibiotics, which we are putting on her eyes. And it's only been a couple days so far, and already her eyes look much better. But we're going to keep doing antibiotics for the next seven to ten days or so just to make sure that they're completely gone and then we just have to keep an eye out on the other kittens to make sure that they also do not get eye infection so i really want to stick with my goal of getting a vlog up every week so even though i have not finished reading the anxious people i am still going to put a vlog up so you guys kind of can check my halfway point and then in the next vlog next week i will finish my thoughts once i finish reading the book and you guys can see how it turns out for me. If you do want to leave in the comments down below, maybe some of your thoughts or reactions to the anxious people. Obviously, don't give spoilers because I'm not done yet. Um, but let me know what you guys are thinking if you have read it or if maybe you're excited to read it but you haven't gotten a chance to read it yet. So I apologize that I cannot give a full overall book rating right now. I'm um, just... Excited that I was able to put up another vlog within one week. I will say in next week's vlog, I will also be opening a book box or two. I had ordered a romance book box subscription, like, I don't know, end of July. Because I had, like, a really good day and I didn't have a lot of anxiety that day. So I wanted to reward myself. And then it showed up a month later and I forgot I ordered it. And then I just got notification that my second month's box was shipped. Which, I, again, I forgot I had signed up for it. So, if the second box gets here in time, I will do an opening for both of the boxes that I got. If not, I will just do an opening for the first box. I don't remember if they're supposed to be young adult romance or adult romance. Probably adult romance. So, you guys have that to look forward to as well. I'm also interested in getting into some specific book box ordering. The one that I ordered was just a random one off of Amazon. But I know that there's like some really popular ones. Like I think there's fairy loot. Um, so if you guys do the book subscriptions. Or there's also the book of the month club I think. Or book of the month. So if you guys do book of the month subscriptions. Or book box subscriptions. Let me know down below in the comments. What are some of the ones that you use. Or maybe you even buy them off of Etsy. I saw Etsy does like date night with a book. Kind of mystery book purchases. Um, so I'm just curious to see if you guys get any. And if you've liked them. If you haven't. Because I'm always trying to find ones that not just give you a book, but also give you some, like, cute trinket things or give you some snacks or just make the book experience a little bit more fun, you know? Alright, so this here is George. He is gray like Anna, but he's also much larger and he has a lot of white around his muzzle. Alright, so we originally called him Curious George because that first night that we brought him home... While everyone else was kind of going into a food coma after we fed them, he was still moving around. He was checking out the crate, checking out the bin, checking out the little shed that we have them in. He was just such a cute, curious little kitten. So we called him Curious George. 
and then we realized that, that was a mouthful, so now we just call him George. And last, but certainly not least, is Squeaker. Named him Squeaker because that first night we brought them all home, he was the loudest and longest crier out of all of them, so it just seemed to fit. So this is it for me. Hopefully I will be posting another vlog next week on Friday for you guys to see that. Otherwise, you guys have a great rest of your day, have a good weekend, and I will catch you guys in a week. Bye!